Hello, this is Danny Data. Danny is an experienced data manager. Danny is happy that the paper era for case report forms is diminishing and he's now able to manage all data electronically. The use of electronic CRF for him means data is much cleaner, the number of queries is much lower, meaning at the end of each study, the study database can be locked a lot faster than before. Actually, what Danny never understood was why such an innovative and data-oriented field like clinical research required several years for transition from paper CRF to electronic CRFs. But either way, he's relieved this problem is finally solved. Right now, Danny's remaining nightmare is the data that comes directly from the patients, that is, patient-reported outcomes. Such data are more and more included in clinical studies as they are not only required by the competent authorities but also by other healthcare agencies who are extremely interested in direct feedback from patients. Patients may be asked to complete quality of life questionnaires or enter data directly into diaries which thereby become important sources of information. However, the quality of these important data sources is often very low. Danny experienced several issues with these incoming data, such as extremely poor handwriting, some patients forgot to record the data, or some did not even understand how to enter the data correctly. A lot of the time, Danny felt that data collected over periods of several weeks were even documented on the same date the patient visited the study site. You could even imagine that the patient may have documented this while at the parking lot of the study site since he could often notice no variation in the patient's handwriting. At times he even wondered whether one of the investigators had documented the data on behalf of the patient as the handwriting looked familiar with that of several different patients. What constantly crossed Danny's thoughts after having several of these experiences was what the competent authorities thought about such poor quality of patient reported outcomes and low compliance that he even had doubt on the data integrity. For his newest study, Danny for the first time got a chance to suddenly work with an electronic patient reported outcome system, in short, EPRO. At first, he had his doubts on the feasibility of EPRO as the study also enrolled patients between the ages of 50 and 70 years old. Hence, he just wasn't sure if these patients were also able to enter the required data directly into a smartphone. To his astonishment, Danny is positively surprised that the compliance from the patients increased significantly due to the ability to audit trail and that EPRO database receives entered data consistently, he's now sure that the parking lot phenomenon does not exist anymore because the patients received coded emails or short messages to remind them to enter real-time data. The elderly patients also appear to love using their own smartphone to enter study data as they are able to enlarge text sizes to read the instructions much better than reading the small text often provided to them on paper questionnaires. For Danny, this is such a relief since the handwriting of the patients is no longer a problem to read anymore, hence this has made his life a lot easier. The best part is that the costs of EPRO are not higher than the cost of paper questionnaires as 95% of the study patients on smartphones nowadays. The remaining 5% receive smartphones from Danny, which cost him peanuts compared to the cost of copying, data transfer and data entry. After experiencing such great results after using EPRO for the first time, Danny's belief in patient-reported outcome is now back as he finally understands why competent authorities are so keen on EPRO data where data quality and data integrity can be proven easily. Better data quality ensure data integrity, less stress, better transparency, higher patient compliance, higher study value at lower study costs. When will you transition to an electronic patient reported outcome?